And uh, in this talk, what we try to do is to uh, revisit, um, so and to to, to give uh, um, a new uh, a, a new vision uh, to a property, a distinguishing property that was introduced. Uh, um, last year by Yusuke Todo in Europe in 2015, and it, that's called the division property. Um, yeah. Uh, so the general setting, so we're interested in, uh, in box ciphers, and in particular cryptanalysis of box ciphers. So, um, so in general, um, when uh, an attacker wants to uh, to, to break a cipher, the thing, first thing that he will try to do is to find a distinguishing property that should hold for every value of the secret key, uh, key K. Okay, and once this uh, distinguishing property is found, then he can probably try to mount a key recovery attack uh, to find the value of the secret key or part of it. Uh, but in this talk, we'll all be only be interested in the, this distinguishing, um, uh, to, in how to find a distinguishing property for, for a block cipher. So uh, last, last year, Yusuke Dodo presented, uh, introduced a new uh, distinguishing property that he called the division property. And uh, in some way, this can be seen as a generalization of uh, um, integral and higher order differential distinguishers. Uh, so he managed in particular uh, by using this to break, to fully break full MISTI-1 for the first time. And this was the best paper award at last, last year of crypto. So um, I will try to explain a little bit what is the division property, but before this, I will introduce the notation that I will need. So um, the, first, the first notation is uh, the way I will represent uh, monomials of n variables. So um, imagine you have uh, so two vectors, two n-bit vectors, x and y. I will denote by x to the power of y the product coordinate by coordinate of xi to the power ui, where xi and ui are the coordinates of the vectors x and y. So let's see this with an example. Um, imagine you have the u is the vector 1, 0, 1, 0. So x to the power of u um, will be, so the, the coordinate x4 to the power of 1, the coordinate x3 to the power of, of 0, um, the coordinate x2 to the power of 1, and the coordinate x1 to the power of 0. When we have a coordinate to the power of zero, uh, actually this always will give one, so we don't care about uh, these positions. So this will give the monomial um, x4, x2. Uh, then imagine you want to evaluate this monomial. So at the point, let's say uh, x equals to one, one, zero, zero. And what we will get is, so we compute one to the power of one, one to the power of, of zero, times zero to the power of one, times zero to the power of zero. And actually, um, this, uh, uh, this product always, almost always gives one, only uh, we have zero only in the case when the base is zero and the exponent is one. So um, what we can say is that uh, from this, if we evaluate a monomial, we say that it will be one um, if and only if the, uh, we avoid the situation where we have zero in the basis and an exponent one, which means uh, that we have uh, the sum will be, uh, um, the product will be equal to one, if and only if all the coordinates of u are strictly smaller or equal to uh, the, uh, the corresponding coordinates of x. And this is, uh, so this is a partial order, and so when I will say u is uh, smaller or equal to x, I will uh, use this, uh, I, I will mean in this sense, and I will use this special notation. Okay, so what is the, the division property? Um, actually, uh, if we have a set of elements in F2 to the n, we will say that the set X has the division property of order k, and we will denote it by d and k, if the sum, when we take the sum over all elements in X of X to the u, so of these monomials, is zero for all vectors u uh, that have a Hamming weight that is strictly less than k. So if this happens, we say that our set has a division property D, uh, of order k. Uh, so the division property is a kind of generalization of uh, integral uh, properties because uh, for some particular values of k, uh, we, we, get, um, uh, we get some very well-known uh, integral properties. For example, uh, it is easy to see that uh, when we have k is equal to 2, if uh, 
a set has a division property of order two, then actually it has the balance property. And when it has um, a division property of maximal order, then it has a self-traded property. That means that all the values in the set are taken exactly, exactly once. But however, the novelty in, this, uh, in the division property is uh, the introduction of these intermediate properties, that means properties for case that are uh, between three and n minus one. Um, so there is not a very nice, uh, we don't have a nice interpretation of these intermediate properties. However, we can propagate them and get some information and use some information about the algebraic degree uh, so to construct distinguishers. Uh, so uh, this will be the, uh, uh, the outline uh, of my talk. I will start by introducing so the main notion of this paper, that is the parity set of a set. I will show how this is linked to uh, the division property and how we can use it to get a very nice description and easy description about uh, sets uh, um, having the division property actually of any order. Then um, I will show how we can use this uh, property to construct distinguishers uh, for um, iterated block ciphers based on the uh, SPN construction. And finally, I will show an application with some um, a low data distinguisher on the lightweight uh, block cipher present. Okay, uh, so what is a parity set of a set? So the notion is very easy. Actually, uh, it is exactly the set uh, that is composed of all exponents u such that the sum, uh, when you take the sum over all elements x of the monomials x to the power of u is one. So this, actually this sum can be zero or one. So uh, you put in this, uh, in this set all the exponents that make so the sum is one, and this is, will be the parity set of x. Okay, so what is nice? Um, first thing is that you can, you can compute the parity set of a set very easily. So to do so, um, I will need a notion of the incidence vector of a set. So the incidence vector of a set of, in a, uh, of f2 to the n is just a vector, a binary vector of length 2 to the n that has one at all the positions for which x is in the set. So let's see this with an example. For example, uh, let's say n is equal to three, and, your, and the set x uh, is composed of three elements, one, four, and seven. Then uh, the incidence vector will be uh, a vector of length eight, uh, of Hemingway three, that will have uh, once exactly the positions were uh, uh, corresponding to the elements in the set. Consider now uh, a binary mat matrix uh, with two to the n rows and two to the n columns, um, where uh, the coefficient at the intersection of row u and column a will be uh, the evaluation of the monomial a to the u. Uh, okay, and what we can actually uh, show um, quite easily by just taking uh, the different definitions, writing them down, is that if you want to obtain uh, uh, the incidence vector of the parity set of a set, you actually just take the incidence vector of the set and you multiply it by this, this matrix G. So this is an example. So here N is equal to three, and here is uh, the matrix G corresponding to this N. So uh, the columns um, uh, are, uh, are fixed. Uh, so the column corresponds to the basis and the rows corresponds to the exponent. So if you do this uh, computation, you obtain this binary matrix that is upper triangular. And uh, let's say your set X is one, two, and four, uh, three and four. You compute the incidence vector, you multiply them, and what you obtain will be the incidence vectors of the parity set, the corresponding parity set. So uh, find, finding the, par the, uh, the parity set uh, of a set, it's actually it's very easy. And what is nice about this, uh, what we will see, is that um, uh, actually uh, the parity set of a set is unique. So there is one to one correspondence between a set and a parity set. And for this, um, I will need uh, the notion of, um, uh, of Reed Muller code. So a Reed Muller code uh, of length 2 to the n and order r, r is just the set of all value vectors of all Boolean functions. Um, that have degree that is strict, uh, less or equal to R. And if you look, if you're a little bit familiar, familiar with Reed Muller code and you look at this matrix, actually you will immediately see that this matrix is a generator matrix of Reed Muller code of uh, uh, length 2 to the n and order n. 
And so what is nice about this is that we know that this matrix has full rank, that's an invertible, and that is inverse, uh, uh, it's the, uh, the matrix itself, okay, so it's uh, involutive. Uh, and exactly from this, what we see now, uh, that because of this, we have an isomorphism of binary vectors um, that matches uh, the incidence vector of a set to the incidence vector of the, the parity set. So, which proves that for each uh, subset U, there is a unique X, uh, subset uh, X, uh, such that U is a parity set of X, and you can go uh, backwards, uh, so yeah, so, so there is a one-one to one correspondence. Okay, uh, so what is now the link of this uh, parity set and uh, the division property? So actually, um, it's easy to see that uh, if you have a set X that fulfill the division property of order K, this just means that uh, the parity set, um, all the elements in the parity set will have a Hyman weight that will be greater or equal to K, which means uh, that uh, the division property of order k is just a lower bound on the weight of the elements in, uh, in the parity set. So here what we will try to do, so instead uh, we'll see after to propagate uh, just the division property, so this element k and to see how, how it downgrades uh, through the row, we will try to propagate actually the elements in the parity sets and this will be nice because we will have um, a more uh, accurate actually uh, representation and we'll have the form of the elements. We'll better see what, what happens. Okay, um, for the moment, let's stay for in the more uh, theoretical part. Um, so actually what we can by this uh, link and by using Reed Miller codes, I will not get into details, but what we can prove is that um, if you have a set X that fulfills the division property of order K, um, this is uh, the true if and only if uh, its incidence vector uh, belongs to the Reed Miller code uh, of length 2 to the n minus K and order n. Okay, and uh, this correspondence uh, permits us to, um, to show uh, actually things about um, what does it mean for a set X uh, to have a division pro property of a certain order. This was a question um, that uh, uh, last year many people tried to answer. Uh, so there for some extreme cases for one, two and n, uh, the answer was given, but very often in a very complicated way. But uh, if we take the correspondence with the Re Reed-Muller code, um, we can actually uh, give some proofs like just in one or two lines. So for example, it was proven by um, Sun and Al last year that if a set X fulfills the division property of order K, then what we say about the set X is that it has at least two to the K elements. What we now can, this is the result, what, uh, the proof was very long, but with Reed-Muller Reed codes, we can prove this in, uh, in one line just using the minimum distance of, of this code. And uh, what we get more is that um, we, have equal, we know when the equality happens. It happens exactly for uh, sets that are as, as fine subspace of dimension exactly key. Um, okay, so we can recover uh, easily results that, uh, that were already known. Um, what is new is that uh, we, we know, we can describe exactly uh, all sets that fulfill a division property of order n minus one, we say that we know that they're exactly um, uh, all the affine uh, hyperplanes. Okay, uh, so now we will see how we can use this property, how we can pro propagate it through um, the, the round operations of um, a substitution permutation network. In particular, we will see what happens with the parity set when we go through key addition and when we go through S-box. Okay, uh, so the first operation, usually an SP, SPN uh, cipher, is the addition with an unknown key. Uh, so unfortunately, as the key is unknown, we cannot, uh, we don't know exactly what happens with the parity set after the addition, but what we can prove is that the elements that will be in the parity set after the addition will be all the successors of uh, the elements that were there before. So with an example, um, let's say n is equal to four and the parity set of x uh, is, uh, uh, com is composed of two elements, three and C. And now we add the same uh, secret key to, uh, all, the, uh, to all the elements in the set. Uh, 
we don't know exactly what, what will be the value because the, uh, the key is unknown, but we know that uh, the priority set will be included in all the successors of three and C that gives this, uh, the following seven elements. Okay, so uh, let's see now what happens uh, when we go through an S box. Um, so we would like to, to, so we have in the beginning an, a priority set, then we apply the, uh, an S-box to uh, all the elements of the, of the set, and we want to see uh, what, what is the priority set at the output, the output priority set. Um, so if you use a definition, if you want uh, to find which are the, the elements V that are in the priority set of, um, uh, so uh, after, after the S-box, uh, the definition says that there will be all the elements V such that um, when you take the sum of over s uh, of s to the power of v, uh, this sum is equal to one. Okay, and this just means that uh, the algebraic normal form of this function, that is just the product of some output coordinate of the s box, contains some monomial x to the power of u for some u that belongs to the priority set. And why this is so? Because if it was not the case, then the sum would be zero. So now um, I will define this, um, uh, the set v VSU that will be exactly all uh, the uh, vectors V such that S to the V, that is just the product of uh, some coordinates uh, designated by V, will contain the monomial X to the U. And now it is so we can, it is easy, uh, we, we can see that uh, the priority set, so after the S box will be uh, the union, it will take all the elements in the priority set of X of this set VSU. And this uh, set, so this set VSU, we can see it in the formal matrix, and it's very, very important actually for the resistance of the cipher against uh, this type of distinguishes. So here is the matrix VSU for um, the S box of the block cipher uh, present. So what we see here, um, so the, the columns, they correspond to, um, to the to, to products of, uh, of output coordinates, and the rows, they correspond to monomials. So what does it mean? Uh, so we have here a correspondence directly with the algebraic normal form of a function. So here you have the four coordinates, the algebraic normal form of the four coordinates of present. And actually what you see, if you look at uh, the first four columns, uh, what you have vertically is just the algebraic normal form of each coordinate. Because, uh, for example, if you have uh, the x at uh, the intersection of the row 4 and the column 1, just means that uh, the monomial x, uh, x, uh, x4 belongs to uh, the first coordinate. Okay. So uh, there is also, um, course, we can also compute uh, the um, this uh, set uh, VSU uh, not only from the S box itself, but also from the inverse S box. I will not uh, explain this into detail, but uh, actually, as a supermutation, uh, we can easily go from one to, to the another, to another. And uh, yeah, probably will not have to explain this. But um, what we we can see that so columns correspond to the algebraic normal form of the of the, of the S box and to rows. So if we see rows, they correspond to uh, the algebraic normal form, a kind of algebraic normal form of the, of the of inverse S-box. So um, ideally, we want that this, um, we will see that this matrix is as, uh, uh, as full as possible. We don't know, we want to have uh, uh, like sparse lines or, or columns. Um, so to see this, I will show an application to, uh, to a block cipher present. So the only things uh, I need from this design is uh, the fact that it has um, uh, 64 bits uh, of, um, uh, of block size, so uh, that there are 16 uh, S boxes of uh, four bits of degree theta that are applied in parallel, and that the linear layer is uh, a bit permutation. Uh, so uh, Yosuke Todo, in his seminal paper, he describes some generic distinguishers uh, based on the division property um, that only exploited actually uh, the degree of the, of the function and not uh, any, other, uh, any other properties. So if we uh, fix um, the, the input size, so the data complexity of the distinguisher to 2 to the 12, he managed to find um, a distinguisher for three rounds of presence. So what I will show here, that is that it was taken into account um, 
the linear layer and the S box, we can uh, find distinguishers for five, uh, four, five, and six rounds by keeping the same data complexity. So for doing so, uh, we will start, uh, so we'll take the, our in, uh, input set X, um, we'll have the following form, so it will be of size 2 to the 12, where we have three nibbles that take all possible values, and the upper other nibbles will be fixed to a constant value. So we can see from there that the priority set actually, uh, as we have, just after we have the key addition, we don't know actually what, what will be the value, so for uh, the parts when we have the constant value, the priority, uh, the values of the priority set can be, uh, can, can be everything, but, but us uh, in the three nibbles we have the all, the all property, the set radial property, we know that there is only one element uh, in the priority set that is the uh, all one vector. So we know that the form of the priority set after uh, the key addition will be uh, like here and this is conserved after the first S-box layer. Okay, then we can now uh, take into advantage um, uh, the linear layer of, uh, of present because we know exactly which is its form. So um, we now just permute uh, the elements in the, in the priority set. And then actually we can just use uh, some, uh, well, we know what happens um, with, uh, with the degree. So uh, we know uh, which kind of, uh, of monomials we can have. So uh, yeah, so we had, we had gone with the details, but it's very easy. We can prove that after four rounds, um, in the priority set, we only have elements that have a having weight strictly uh, great or equal to two, uh, and that means that our set has a balanced property. So if we have an element that is equal to one, then we, we stop the, the distinguisher, we cannot say anything anymore. We would like to move to, uh, to five rounds, but however, as we can see, this is not possible for um, all type of S-boxes, uh, because we have found um, a propagation of the parity, of the values in the parity set, that, leaves, that leads to after the, the fifth round um, to an element of Hamming weight one. Okay, uh, but this is possible, so this propagation is possible if the S-box makes the transitions from the element E to one and E to two possible. Uh, so we will see what happens for the uh, um, uh, present S-box. So if we look at the line that is cor row corresponds to E, we saw that this row is very sparse, and in particular there are no um, transitions to elements of Hamming weight one, uh, and only one transition to an element of Hamming weight two. So this is kind of a weakness of this S-box. So we use it. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, we were able to verify by computer programming that uh, there were no elements of Hamming weight one after five rounds. So that means that the output set after five rounds has balanced property. Um, if we want to move more, uh, actually we cannot have a distinguisher like this for six rounds because uh, there are elements of Hamming weight one after six rounds. However, if we look at the column now, um, uh, of, uh, the, of, of this matrix, we see that the first column is very uh, sparse because actually the first uh, coordinate of the A and F of uh, algebraic normal form of uh, uh, present is, uh, is only quad quadratic and has very few terms. So uh, what you manage to see is uh, that there are, after six rounds, elements of Hamming weight one, but uh, not of all the elements are possible. In particular, elements that are correspond to the first coordinate of each of the 16 X boxes never appear. That means that we have 16 values that are never appear, so this gives a kind of weaker distinguisher. Um, so to conclude about this part, um, the present S box is probably not the best for, for this type of, uh, of, uh, of distinguishers. This, that, that's why we had, were able to find this attack. So if you want uh, that your S box uh, design resists to this kind of attack, uh, the best way is to choose um, S boxes that have all uh, of the components of the S box are of maximal degree. So now then we can prove that you will not able to have uh, this, uh, yeah, this sparse rows and columns. Okay, so to conclude, um, we, uh, so we saw that the notion of parity set permits actually to have, to capture more information during the propagation uh, compared to the division property. Um, and so there are some, uh, okay, and some open questions about this. So the drawback is of course that it makes, it takes more time and memory to, uh, to do the propagation uh, because uh, actually you have a lot of information to propagate uh, when compared to just uh, the Hamming weight that you have with the division property. So one question uh, would be how to make this more time and memory efficient. 
Um, yeah, probably don't have any time anymore, so I will stop here. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.